Well, hello, crafty friends. I am so excited to be with you again for another special video. Today's video is going to be a little bit different because I'm not actually making a card, but don't click away yet. I think that you will really enjoy this project as well. Today we're gonna to be making something that I think pretty much everyone loves, or at least knows someone who loves them, and that's stickers. Now, before I jump into the how-to of sticker making, I do wanna give a special shout out to Cricut, who is sponsoring this video today. Isn't it crazy how much joy stickers can bring to people? I remember when I was a kid, I'd be on the way to Walmart, which is where we did our grocery shopping as a kid, and I would be so eager the entire ride over there thinking about that little yellow smiley face sticker that I would hopefully get from one of the workers. Now, today we're not making smiley face stickers. I'm gonna make some holiday theme stickers and specific some gift tag stickers that you can put on your presents this holiday season and I'm gonna take it one step further and even show you how to make your stickers waterproof. And even though Cricut reached out to me to make a video for them, I've been making stickers with my Cricut for a while now, and I think that it's a really fun thing to have in your back pocket, especially for you small businesses who are selling your products. You can always slip a little sticker with your logo into any of your packages that you're selling to friends, family, Etsy, whatever. So without further ado, let's make some stickers. Okay, so before we dive into actually creating our stickers, I do want to talk just briefly about machines. Today we will be using the Cricut Joy Extra, which if you are at all familiar with my videos, you've probably seen me use the younger brother of the Cricut Joy Extra, which is just this normal Cricut Joy. Now these two machines are very similar. They're honestly almost identical except for two major things. First of all, obviously the Cricut Joy Extra is a little bit larger, so that makes it better suited for larger scale projects. But the real big differentiator is the Cricut Joy Extra supports a feature called Print Then Cut. And if you're not familiar with what Print Then Cut is, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a feature that Cricut has, which allows you to basically print any design on your home printer. And then the Cricut has a sensor, which can basically read that design and then cut around it exactly. So the Print Then Cut feature makes the Cricut Joy Extra an excellent option for sticker making. Now I get asked all the time, should I buy the Cricut Joy Extra or the Cricut Joy? And honestly, there's no wrong answer. It just depends on how you're gonna use it. If you think you might find value in the Print Then Cut feature, I would, of course, course go with the Cricut Joy Extra because the regular Cricut Joy does not have that capability. You also do get the extra flexibility of having the larger work surface. Now if you don't think you'll use Print Then Cut very much and you're low on space or you only make cards then I would go ahead and spring for the Cricut Joy. The Cricut Joy is more affordable and it takes up less room. Honestly this is the machine that I still grab for the most because I do have a tiny craft room but I love being able to make my stickers and other Print and Cut projects using my Joy Extra. Okay, enough about machines. Let's go ahead and jump into our materials just a bit. So you can see here in front of me, I have three different types of sticker paper from Cricut. The first one I have is the regular printable sticker paper. So this is going to feel kind of like cardstock, except it has that sticky adhesive backing that of course makes it a sticker. The other two papers I have here are both waterproof sticker papers. One of them is a transparent sticker, which means that you are actually printing on a transparent piece of paper. So whatever material you put that sticker on, color of that material is gonna kind of shine through that sticker. And then the other paper I have here is this really beautiful holographic paper. I've actually never used this holographic paper, but it looks absolutely gorgeous. For today's video, I think we're gonna go ahead and create stickers with this waterproof transparent set. And the big call out here is if you're making waterproof stickers, there's one extra step that we have to take that you don't have to take if you're making regular stickers. And I'll be sure to call that out when we get there. But before we do, I wanna jump into design space real quick and actually talk about how to design your stickers. Okay, so over here in Design Space, you can see that I have a fresh blank canvas. There's a couple of different ways you can add stickers. If you have your own designs that you've already designed previously, you can go ahead and upload those directly to Design Space. You can see that I've done that here with my own logo, the Hero Arts logo, and a couple of other things. However, Design Space also has a ton of images already at your fingertips that you can choose from. So if you wanna go over here and click Images, you can search for pretty much any image you could want. So I'm interested in making some Christmas stickers and specifically some Christmas tags for Christmas gifts this season. So I'm gonna go ahead and search for Christmas tag and forgive me, my keyboard is way over here off camera. And this is gonna give us a bunch of options to choose from. However, I wanna take it one step further and actually filter by operation type. And we're gonna filter by print and cut. This means we're only gonna be shown images that are already formatted and ready to go for the print and cut feature. Okay, perfect. And as you can see, we have 3,100 images here to choose from. So let's just scroll through and pick a few. I really like this one. 
And you can see when you select them, they kind of get added. I like to call this getting added to your cart. So you can select a few at a time before you add them to your canvas. Let's see. Okay, I actually have a card that I think would go along well with that one. So let's choose the little deer. Oh, and then I'm also a big fan of this kind of oval peppermint guy. Okay, let's just go ahead and start with those three. All right, obviously these are huge. <laughs> we don't want stickers this big, so I'm gonna go ahead and select these and size them down a bit. Although before I do that, let me go ahead and show you how to create a border. But notice that on this particular design, there's no border around it. For my stickers, I like to add a border. You don't have to do this, it's just my preference. And so to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and select offset here. And you can see that it creates a border around the sticker. And honestly, that border width looks about how I would like it, but you can change whether you want the border thinner or larger by changing the distance here. I'm gonna go right about there and hit apply. You'll see that now you have a second layer over here. So we have our regular peppermint tag design and then that offset layer that we just created. Go ahead and change that offset to white and then you'll select both layers, which you can do by selecting one of the layers and holding down shift on your keyboard and selecting the other layer. And once they're both selected, which you'll know once they're both highlighted like this, go ahead and click flatten. And basically what that's doing is that's kind of combining the two layers together so that they're treated as one. And then I'm gonna go ahead and size that down because it's still rather large. Perfect. And then you can see this little deer tag also doesn't have a border. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a border to it. That looks good. Remember, change your offset to white. Granted, the sticker paper we're using today is transparent, so really that's not gonna do much, <laughs> but that's fine. And then go ahead and select both layers again. Remember, hold down shift and select the other layer and then click flatten. Perfect. And then we'll resize this guy. And then it looks like this design already, yeah, it already has that white border around it, so that's perfect. I don't even have to worry about adding a border to this one. So I'm just gonna size it down. Perfect. Okay, so I've got three stickers ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and add a few more and then I will meet you right back here. Okay, so as you can see, I've added a few more stickers here. I got a little crazy. These do not necessarily coordinate or go together, but that's kind of how I like my Christmas to be. I don't, I'm not such a matchy-matchy kind of Christmas person where all my wrapping and stuff has to match. So this is just perfect for me. And once you're ready, go ahead and click make up here in the top right corner. And you'll notice the design space went ahead and rearranged all these stickers so that they fit perfectly on the sheet. Now, if I had too many stickers that wouldn't necessarily fit on the sheet, it would just go ahead and add them to a second sheet. So no worries there. And then assuming this all looks good to you, go ahead and click continue. And then we're ready to send it to the printer. So I'm gonna go ahead and click send to printer. And then you have a couple of options here. You can see I already have my printer selected, so I'm good to go there. And then you have two options down here. The first one is add bleed. This one's not super relevant for the project we're doing today because we have that clear border around it. Essentially what this does is Cricut will look at all the images you have on your sheet and around the edges, it'll actually add extra ink, almost like a little bit of a buffer around the edges. And that's so that whenever the Cricut comes through and cuts around your images, there's less of a chance of leaving off any white part that maybe the cut wasn't exactly precise. Again, not super relevant for us today because we added a border anyway, but I'm going to go ahead and leave it checked. And then the second option is to use system dialog. That's just a fancy way to say use your regular default printer menu. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. So you can see now I have the option to go ahead and use my regular printer settings, which is great because I want to make sure that the paper I'm using is coming from the back tray. And of course I want the quality set to best because I want the best stickers and then we'll go ahead and print. However, before we print, let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about that sticker paper. Okay, so let's take a closer look at the sticker paper. Whenever you're using the waterproof sticker paper, you're gonna actually have two different types of sheets in your package here. So the first thing you'll see is this kind of solid white sheet, at least it looks that way. So you'll need one of those. And then you'll also have this sheet with the Cricut grid lines here. And this is actually the sheet that you will print your stickers on. Now, the important thing to call out here, which I know is a little obvious, but I've made this mistake before, so. I I feel like it's important to call out. Make sure when you load this sheet into your printer, you load it such that the images are printed on this white side. You don't wanna print your images on the grid paper. And I know every printer is different, so just make sure that whichever way you're feeding it in, you're feeding it in so that it prints on this side. So this is the paper you'll feed through your printer. And then this other sheet that you're using is actually a vinyl laminate and it's actually transparent, it's not white. So this is just a white backer 
and then you can see you have this transparent laminate that we're gonna apply. So this sheet is actually what makes your stickers waterproof because once the designs are printed, we're gonna apply this and this will protect your stickers. So I'm gonna go ahead and load this guy into the printer and print out our designs. All right, so we have our designs printed and one thing I wanna call out here is when you're using the print then cut feature, Cricut is gonna print these little black kind of corners around your design and those are really important. Essentially what these do is whenever you feed your paper through your Cricut machine, that sensor that I told you about is gonna be looking for these four corners. And that's gonna help the machine determine its internal alignment so that it's able to cut around the designs perfectly. So I say that because I wanna caution you, if you print this out and then for whatever reason trim these corners off, your machine's gonna have trouble cutting out the stickers. So make sure you leave these corners on your paper. Now, the next step is where things get a little bit tricky and if you're going to struggle a little bit, I'm gonna be honest, this may be the part, unless you're a Cricut Pro, which kudos to you. The very first time I did this, I struggled. So <laughs> I just wanna throw that out there that if you struggle, you're not alone. So you're gonna grab your vinyl laminate and you're gonna notice there's this little thin strip at the top. Go ahead and peel that off first. So now we have a little bit of the clear laminate exposed. So this is the sticky side here, the side with the sticker. So go ahead and flip that over and we wanna line that up the very top edge of our sticker sheet. And while you want to be as exact as you can here, you don't have to be perfect. The main thing is you wanna make sure that everything within those four corners I showed you, you wanna make sure that that is good to go. If you have laminate hanging off the edges, it's fine. We can trim it off, it's no big deal. So when I'm applying my laminate, I like to use one of these scraper tools, or if you have like a squeegee on hand, I would probably suggest having a larger one. Unfortunately, all I have at the moment is my smaller one, but this will help you get out any air bubbles and make sure the laminate is down nice and flat. So once the top is well adhered, you're basically gonna treat this as you would if you were putting on a screen protector to your phone. I know we've all been there. And so you're going to lift this layer up and basically very slowly peel the white backing off while you are squeegeeing or scraping to make sure the laminate is going down flat. Does that make sense? I'm assuming most of you watching this video before have probably put on a screen protector. So I'm hoping that this makes plenty of sense. Perfect, and then once it's on, go ahead and just continue to scrape out any air bubbles that there may be. Okay, I am gonna call that pretty good. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step, which is to cut our stickers out. So at this point, we'll just go ahead and put our sticker sheet on the mat. If you have a brayer on hand, these can be really nifty to make sure that whatever you're applying to your cutting mat has a nice hold. Now, before we actually get to cutting, I do wanna talk just briefly about the two different types of cuts you might wanna make. And you'll most commonly hear these two types of cuts referred to as die cut stickers and kiss cut stickers. And I promise you're familiar with both already, you just may not know the terminology, but a die cut sticker looks something like this. This is a sticker of a logo that I created not too long ago. You can see I have the Cricut sticker paper there on the back. And this is called a die cut sticker because you are cutting through that top sticker design layer as well as as the backing. You can see the backing is still applied so that you have a full standalone die cut sticker. Now a kiss cut sticker is going to be more like your traditional sticker sheet. So in that case you're only going to cut through that top layer of the sticker design and the backing is all going to still be that one unanimous piece. That way you can store all the stickers on the same sheet and just peel them off as you need them. Now for today's stickers, I'm gonna make die cut stickers just because that's my preference, but I will be sure to show you in the settings how to accomplish both. Okay, so let me grab my Cricut and then we will jump into design space. Okay, so back in design space, we are on step two. Remember, we've already printed our sticker paper and at this point, we're gonna select our base material and this is what determines the pressure of the cut. So this is where you're gonna decide, do I wanna make die cut stickers or kiss cut stickers? If you're doing die cut stickers, I always use the heavy cardstock option just because that has always worked great for me so I change it however if you do want to do the kiss cut option if you want to make a sticker sheet I would go to browse all materials and then you're just gonna search for the material you're using so in this case you would come down here and find printable waterproof sticker set transparent because that's what we're using so if you select this design space we'll know the exact pressure that it needs to apply to give you that kiss cut effect now Warning here, it's not uncommon for everyone's blade to be a little different. Maybe your blade is sharper or it's more used and more dull, or maybe you're using a different type of material. There are so many different factors that can go into this cutting process that sometimes the same setting's not going to work for everyone, which is fine. 
And that is why Design Space allows you to also create custom settings. So if for whatever reason you're finding your stickers are not getting the cut you want, come down here to Material Settings, and then you'll see that it has the settings listed for every type of material that was on that previous page. And there's two main settings here. There's cut pressure and then multi-cut. So that's the number of times that it's actually cutting the same path again. So the lower the cut pressure, the less pressure, the higher, the more pressure, of course. So let's say, for example, you are doing that printable waterproof sticker paper and the cut pressure is 210. If it's not cutting all the way through for whatever reason, you can go ahead and do another test run. I would suggest just cutting out a small basic shape like a square. You can go down here to add new material, type in the name, and actually set your own custom settings here. So you can always play with that, find exactly what pressure works best for you, and then since you're saving it, you can always go back to that again. Okay, enough of my tangent, but I did feel like that was important. So again, I'm doing die cut stickers, so I'm going to go ahead and just click heavy cardstock. To be on the safe side, I am going to turn the pressure up just a little bit because the waterproof sticker sets are pretty thick. And at this point, we are ready to load the machine. Okay, and once it's ready, just go ahead and click the big green go in Design Space. Okay, and just like that, y'all, we have stickers. You can see I went ahead and took off the excess sticker paper, and now we are left with all of our beautiful die-cut stickers. Now, I don't actually have any gifts to put these on yet because I'm a last-minute Christmas shopper, but I do have a few Christmas cards, and I think that these would be really cute to dress up the envelopes. And you know what? I just realized I missed a little bit of sticker paper here in the middle of the wreath. There we go. Okay, so the first card that came to mind whenever I was picking out my stickers was this Christmas card that I actually already had on hand with this little deer inside this snowy forest. And I think that it would be really cute to pair this little tag with this sticker. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to add it to the front of the envelope. And pro tip, if you have trouble removing the backing of the stickers, I would suggest using one of these little craft picks to help peel up the backing. Now remember, we did print these on transparent sticker paper, so you can see how the sticker is actually transparent. So it's gonna pick up whatever material is behind it. In this case, it's white, so it should look pretty much like you just saw it. Perfect. And now I have a cute little deer envelope to go with our deer card. And I think these are also fun to use to help seal your envelope. For instance, I have this very cute Merry Craftmas sweater card. By the way, I will leave the link to my Craftmas merch in the description. And I am going to seal up this red envelope with one of our stickers here. So which one do we think would go good with this? I'm thinking, um, I'm gonna go for the wreath. I think the wreath is cute. And bada boom. Now you have a nice little subtle seal for your envelope. And that's it y'all, that is creating stickers on your Cricut. I mean, if it seemed simple, it's because honestly, it really is simple. I first made stickers a couple months ago with my Cricut and ever since then, I keep making stickers for random events. <laughs> I think that they're just such a fun thing and such a fun surprise because people are never expecting to create custom stickers. So I think it's really fun to create stickers that are based on someone's personality or for an event and just throw a few into a card that you're already sending them. It's just such a fun extra personal touch. For instance, I got this new water bottle recently Recently, and I decided to jazz it up with some stickers. You can tell it was around Halloween because I have my little cold brew ghosty and my spooky juice, but I feel like stickers are just such a fun way to personalize gifts. For instance, I have an illustration here of me and my partner and our dog, and then of course the envelope because I make cards, love New York City. I think it's just such a fun and subtle way to make things a little more personalized. So all that to say, I hope that this was helpful. I hope that you're feeling inspired to make something new and fun. And thank you again to Cricut for sponsoring this video. And if you're new here, I would love for you to subscribe and join our little crafty corner of the internet. I make card making, crafting videos. You can also find me on Instagram, TikTok, all the places. I would love for you to join us. And if you enjoyed this video and you did learn something, it would mean a lot to me if you went ahead and gave this video a thumbs up. That really helps me out and I super, super appreciate it. And with that, thank you for watching and I will catch you on the next one. Bye y'all.